Hello there. Welcome to this video in which we're going to be looking at Fabric's new preview feature, which is materialized lake views. So this is a declarative feature. So what we're looking to do and use MLVs for is to define a loading process. So we want to take some data from our source tables. We want to do some transformations on it, maybe put some constraints to make sure that bad data doesn't get through to our destination. And we're going to want to chain some of these loading processes together. Now, if that sounds familiar, then yeah, plenty of tools on the market that do this. We've got DBT, which is a personal favorite of mine. We've also got SQL Mesh. And in Databricks, we've got Delta Live Tables. So if you're familiar with those services and features, then you've got an idea of what MLVs are all about. If you're not, really this is about declarative processing, where you're not having to manage the schema of a table or the dependencies in which certain tables have to load. You're declaring that through your transformations, SQL queries, and then the feature itself is handling all of the lineage, all the processing, and all of the schema management as well. Look, this is early days for you know MLVs in Fabric. I'm really, really hoping that Microsoft invest in this feature because I think it's got a big future ahead of it. On the screen, you can see an example, right? So we've got a few of these MLVs, they're materialized. So the query is run and the data is actually stored, right? That's better for efficient querying. But you can see we've got a, a chain, we've got a dependency that's been created, right? Now, whoever has created this, so this is the Microsoft documentation, all the links are in the description of the video, they've created the SQL queries that do the loading. They haven't defined a dependency based on the queries and the from clause in those SQL queries. Fabrics MLVs has defined the dependencies. Now, to be quite honest, you can go through the documentation less than 30 minutes. I'm not going to parrot that documentation. What I've been doing with MLVs, I've been trying to find a way of working with them that I believe optimizes the process. The whole point of MLVs are you don't really want to have to manage the creation of the MLVs. That's not really what you do in DBT. All you do is just define your transformations. You create your transformations. You let the tool do everything else, deploy them refresh them, maintain them. So that's what I've done. Bit of PySpark code with some SQL files, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So it's available on GitHub. So GitHub Data High Gen MLV, that's what I've called it. So we've got a current logic of what it does. So ultimately what it does it reads directories of SQL files where you've got your transformations inside. Based on the name of the file, it's going to create a schema. It's going to create an MLV with the same name, and it's going to deploy the logic. If you remove a SQL file, that's going to compare it with the lake house with MLVs deployed, and it'll remove any MLVs that are there. Also, if you change the definition of a SQL transformation file, then the process will automatically pick up those changes and just deploy or redeploy the MLV that you've changed the definition for. It's early days. I'm kind of working with this alongside the current implementation of MLVs, and I hope that's going to kind of continue. But as an example, if I take you to a pre-existing lake house. Now, this has to have schemas enabled. So when you create a lake house, it pops up with an option that says, create it with schemas enabled. 
Yes, that's still in preview. I'm hoping that's going to come out of preview soon. Enable that because this is how MLVs will work. Now on my list on the left hand side, I've got a bronze, I've got a gold and I've got a silver schema. At the moment, I've just got three tables in bronze. This is what we're going to use as the example. It's the data that I've loaded from a database. It hasn't been changed. It hasn't been transformed. What I want to do is create a silver loading process for those tables and then ultimately a gold. Now, you might be way ahead of me and thinking, well, actually, product, product category and product model all could be denormalized into one single table in product. That's what we're going to do in the gold layer. But I don't really want to have to write a notebook and write create materialized view and write the SQL and then run all the steps to be able to do this. I want to run a bit of code. So it's still within a notebook within Fabric. But I just want to define my transformations and this is going to do it for me. So the first thing is set up a directory. I've called it MLV. Then I've got subdirectories, which are groupings of dependencies. So for example, I need these SQL scripts to run before two runs. Now, yeah, you could say, well, actually, isn't that the whole point of materialized late views and DBT and DLT is that you don't have to define the dependencies. Unfortunately, at the moment, because materialized late views don't have any of that ref like functionality in dbt if you want to create the mlvs you're going to have to do them in sequence in which they're dependent on the whole running and refreshing is then all done automatically through fabric so for example i've got three tables here they're my silver transformations for my products product category and product model if i go into product look we're not doing anything crazy here in transformations. It's not the point, right? The point is I'm just showing you the process that I'm following to make my life easier when working with MLVs. So I've got some metadata at the top. So this is all defined in the official documentation. And then I've got my transformation. So all I'm really doing is I'm just going to add a timestamp to that data. Of course, I can write a SQL query to do my transformations, to do my cleansing. But for each of these files, all I've done is the metadata and the SQL logic as well. I haven't defined a create materialized view statement. The process does that all for me. So I've got three files here. And then in my second folder of dependencies, I've got product. And if I open up product, then you can see that I've got a query that's joining those silver tables together to produce my final table. Again, we're not going to dive into the actual SQL here. It's just an example. So based on that, I've essentially just defined my transformations. And yeah, it's a little bit DBT-esque. Maybe I'm sort of copying their process, but hey, it works in terms of managing things a bit easier. So now I want to run that process. So the GitHub account, it's got the code to run this. Um, as you can see, I've got the SQL files here. There's my gold file here. I'm actually going to go back to the root directory. And look, I've got a folder structure. If you define a different folder structure, that's fine. That's just where the root is. I'm actually using a JSON file, which is going to save the metadata of those files. So the location and name of the file, plus the last modified date of the file. What that means is if you go in and modify one of those files and rerun the process, it picks up the changes from that file and then redeploys and processes the MLV. Also, if you notice, we've got a schema name before the actual name of the MLV that I want to create. So the code essentially just strips out the first part and says, right, I want to see a schema called silver. If it isn't there, I'll create it. And then the MLV itself will be created 
as the name of the file. So let's just run it. Let me scroll down to the bottom. And I'm going to enhance the code and modularize it and everything like that. But hey, this is about just getting it out, getting it out there for people to use and test with. So if we go back to here, and I'm just going to refresh the folder. So the code doesn't see that metadata file. So what it's going to do is it's going to run the creation of the MLVs, do it in the sequence in which that folder structure, you know, 010203 is done. If I scroll down, it's done that successfully. And yeah, so we've got that metadata file that's appeared. So actually, let's go and have a look and open up that file. And yeah, so you can basically see we've got the name of the MLV and then we've got some timestamp information and date times about when the file was modified. So for example, if I was to open silver and gold, so my MLVs have been created and processed. If I wanted to change the definition of a gold MLV or a silver MLV, I'll do that. It will change the last modified of the file date time. If I were then to run this code again, it's just going to deploy. And actually, let me just run the code again. Scroll up to the top, run that. Nothing happens. Nothing's changed. I can remove an MLV. So if I was to delete one of these files, that's going to remove the MLV. Now, of course, if you remove an MLV that another MLV requires, that's going to cause a problem, right? So be mindful of that. But basically, that's the process. I just add my transformation logic to these folders, run the notebook, and it's just going to deploy the MLV with the logic inside, tracked by that metadata file. Now, I'm hoping that MLVs are going to advance and that Microsoft are going to invest in them. I'd love some of that functionality that we do see in other products and services, especially things like slowly changing dimensions. That's the kind of stuff that I really want to see uh, in this product and maybe a, a better way of managing. Um, but if I go into the Materialize Lake Views view, then let's have a look at the dependencies. And there we go. Yep. So essentially, there's my gold Materialize Lake View. That feeds from silver, product category, product and product model, which feeds from that bronze layer. The other limitation is that the lineage only works if bronze, silver, and gold are all in the same lake house. Microsoft do have an item in their documentation that says coming soon is cross lake house, cross workspace lineage, because if you've got a lake house medallion deployment where you have these zones, silver, gold, and bronze across different workspaces and lake houses, we're going to need this functionality. So it's just one to keep an eye out. So as I said, you can go to GitHub, grab the code, have a play around. And as always, please feel free to reach out, comment, see if there's anything that we can improve in the process going forward. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.